Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 33 of this Let's Play Victoria 2. This is the army with a state, and we are Germany. In the last episode, we got declared war on by Great Britain, just as we were kind of planning for another war against Austria. So it is number one versus number two again, although this time they have only brought in Greece, because Poland is now in our sphere, and actually keeping an eye on Poland is something that we should really do. Uh, let's increase our relations with you and then maybe we can get you into an alliance or something so we can protect you. Right, so what is happening here? Well, Britain is currently not doing very much at all. We are kind of waiting for them to try and force a landing and we are also finally getting some of the higher technology. So right now we're getting the High Seas Battle Fleet, which very importantly gives us a naval um, base max level plus one so we can get all our naval bases built up and that is super important because we are hugely over our naval force limit right now and that is uh bad because it reduces the fighting strength of all of our ships and right now i'm actually feeling somewhat confident about taking on the royal navy because we have battleships and cruisers and they're probably still kind of in the age of sail so we are working very hard to upgrade some of our naval bases though these aren't going to be done until early next year at the earliest so we're still like a year away industrial r&d investments at this point business start to make long-range produ production more efficient by investing in the research from new tools and products adolf wagner although one of the more active members of schmoller's verein wagner actually supported menger in the method methodenstreit his work on public finance is what he is best known for in economics outside of economics he was a companion to lasalle and rod Bertus, Although not sharing wholly in their socialist ideals and of more conservative instincts in political matters, Wagner was a severe critic of unfettered capitalism and recommended state alleviation of the burden upon labour. He wrote The Science of Finance, volumes 1-4 to in 1877 to 1901, and The Foundations of Political Economy in 1876. Friedrich List Friedrich List was a nationalist and romantic critic of economic theory and one of the forefathers of the German historical school. His best-known work, The National System of Political Economy of 1841, was written as against the free trade doctrines that permit permeated classical economics. However, his was not a polemetical defense of protectionism. He argued on the basis of the analysis of economics, which stressed political factors, notably the nation, in economics. List argued that it was the government's responsibility to foster the productive powers of a nation, and once these were in place, then free trade would ensure, would ensue, but not before. This is akin to the modern infant industry or argument for protection. More relevantly, he developed a theory of economic stages, which was to serve as the blueprint for the German historical school. And we're going to be getting a lot of those inventions as they're coming through, because we've been doing a lot of the culture technologies. Oh, we can get some more. Uh, no, these are the same. And we are still waiting for 98, two years away. Uh, when do the army ones? Are they all in the same time? I'm pretty sure one of these comes in a little earlier. No, they all seem to be 1900. Yep, indeed they are. Okay, not a problem. Are these all 1900? Yeah, 1900 is going to be big time for us. And when does anti-rationalism? Also 1900. So we'll want to get that one because that doubles our research output. And we probably also want to get a little bit more education efficiency so we can get our... Uh, people more literate more quickly literacy is sitting at 78 percent probably because of the austrian and polish territories we brought in because they haven't had as quite as much time under the excellent german education system actually talking of our excellent education system how many people are currently serving as clergymen 1.94 we need to increase investment let's go up to 70 percent something like that and also administration needs to be 2.5% bureaucrats. We currently have 37 so we still have far too many bureaucrats. So we could actually reduce the administrative spending even further, but I don't think we really need to. The other thing I really want to do is add another war goal against Britain. The war is not going well enough, right, because we need more points against them. And I really want to cut them down to size again. In fact, I want to occupy Britain by the end of this war. That is my goal this time. So let's start repaying this loan, just so I'm not paying unnecessary interest. Especially as we are turning a rather nice profit. Augustin Corneau, French philosopher, mathematician, economist. Uh, Augustin Corneau has been rightly held as one of the greatest of the proto-marginalists. The unique insights of his major economics work, researches into the mathematical principles of wealth, were without parallel. Although neglected in his time, the impact of Corneau's work on modern economics can hardly be overstated. 
We are on speed four. Yeah, we are just going to basically roll through time until we either see some uh, British troops appearing on the stage or once our ships are ready to actually combat some of the enemies. And they're gonna, I don't think they'll take much more damage than they have already. In fact, some of them are now getting repaired. But we will just have to sit here for a while. Oh, we can get acceptable pensions. One point eight seven percent of the population want that, as opposed to twenty one percent of the population. No, nope, we're going to give you your pensions, and we are now paying one thousand out in social spending. So it is getting more and more expensive. Uh, unemployment subsidies remain the top one because we are getting more and more unemployed people. Actually, it is probably time to rejig our focuses once again. So Bohemia, let's deselect all and just go with you two. You have enough clerks now. You can stop doing that. Saxony definitely has enough clerks. Slovakia, still working on it. Nordheim has fine. 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 That is too few. You are still working on it. That's fine. Uh, yep. Yep. Galicia. But we decided last time that you just don't have that many workers, so I'm not too bothered by you. Hanover, you're pretty close. Let's stop you working on that now. You're okay. You're okay. You need more clerks. Posen definitely needs more clerks. Let's start working on that. How many we... We still have two more available. Ostprosen, you're okay. Okay. Uh, Baden, you could do us some more. Oh yeah, you have a lot of workers as well. Yeah, you definitely can be more efficient. Uh, Elsass Lorraine as well. So, eh. You don't have a huge number of workers, so I'm going to kind of leave you. You have too many. Ostanova, I'm actually quite tempted to say that you need to start focusing more on craftsmen. Person, you could do it more. You have a fair number of workers. Let's say a little bit. Actually, you're the fifth smallest state. None of these are particularly small. And then you two are virtually no one in production whatsoever. Okay, in that case, I'm going to say... Oh, no, all the focuses are in use. Okay, marvellous. That was easy. Let's repay another loan. And then let's reduce our tariffs somewhat. It's that they're about there. We want to keep our uh, economy fairly balanced. Yeah, that will do. Jules de Puy. Jules Dupuy, Dupuy was probably the most illustrious of the French engineer econom economists. Trained in the École de Pont à Air Chaussées in Paris, Dupuy had a distinguished career as a civil engineer. From his work with infrastructure, he was inspired to develop economic theory. Dipper. Very good. I think you guys are actually starting to repair, which is good to see. Come on, January. You couldn't come quickly enough. Oh, no, British. Hello, Britons. Alert, alert! We have evil people invading us. They found a way in. Joseph Schumpeter. After a quick doctorate in Vienna, Schumpeter roamed around to something of a footloose lawyer until he rejoined academia in 1909. It was while he was teaching at the Serzonowitz, now in the Ukraine, that he wrote his Theory of Economic Development in 1911, where he first outlined his famous theory of entrepreneurship. He argued that those daring spirits, entrepreneurs, created technical and financial innovations in the face of competition and falling profits, and that it was these spurs of activity which generated irregular economic growth. In 1919, Schumpeter became the Austrian Minister of Finance, unfortunately presiding over the hyperinflation of the period, and thus was dismissed later that year. Although excelling as a teacher above everything, Joseph Schumpeter nonetheless completed three more books while at Harvard. His didactic business cycles, his popular Capitalism, Socialism and Democracy, in which he famously predicted the downfall of capitalism in the hands of the intellectuals. So how is it that you guys have arrived over here? What kind of commander are you? Yeah, you're an attack guy. You should be just fine. Beer hall! Huzzah! Or should I say cheers? This is an absolute smash. Bye-bye. It was nice to know you. Okay. Um, we are still making money. I'm oh, unfortunate. Unemployment, I think, is... Oh, yeah, it's dramatically falling. 
6,000 unemployed in Posen, but I'm going to assume that a whole lot of my factories are starting to come together. And we are still investing in an absolute shed load. And unlike Britain, my economy is still booming because we have not mobilised. Britain has, we have not. Can I upgrade my forts anymore? No. I'm still kind of annoyed that you're apparently taking losses, although it is less than 1%. Uh, okay, we are losing money again. Now, actually, we do want to be generating money because the new shipyards are excruciatingly painful. They're like 100,000 each. 121,000 pounds for another shipyard, so we're going to need to save up a lot of that because I want to pump a bunch of those out as soon as we are able. So we're actually going to beef up our tariffs and we're going to leave the taxes where they are. The poor luxury levels are actually going down. Um... We're making almost £2,000 a day, so that should be just fine. Uh, are you guys improving at all? I kind of suspect not. USA has declared war on us. Alright, good luck. Still not seeing any other troops appearing in our lands, though. Onwards. Just means that there's another large nation that's mobilising. We're probably actually selling guns and stuff to them. Maybe not directly, but almost certainly indirectly, because we probably produce a lot of them. In fact, we can check that. Let's let's have a look at that in a minute. The Sokol Movement, originally founded in 1862 as a Czech gymnastics movement in Prague, the Sokol Movement soon spread further to other Slavic countries. While in theory a non-partisan organisation, the Sokol Movement was in practice an important vehicle for the furthering of Czech nationalism and, later on, pan-Slavic thought and ideology. The movement aimed to provide its members with comprehensive training of both mind and body, and its locales often acted as important forums for the dissemination of radical and nationalist thought, for which was several times suppressed by the authorities. So all pops in Slovakia who are not North German will gain militancy, or will gain consciousness. Let's give you consciousness. And that is consciousness, not conscientiousness. <laughs> okay, so... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's get the high pensions. Uh, we are still extremely liberal. Good. Leon Walras, the French economist Leon Walras, pronounced Valras, sorry, has been hailed by Joseph Sumpeter as the greatest of all economists. Valras was one of the three leaders of the marginalist revolution, even though his greatest work, Elements of Pure Economics, was published in 1874, three years after those of William Stanley Jevons and Karl Menger. Nonetheless, alone among the three revolutionaries, Leon Valras was uh, sorry set forth the new marginalist or neoclassical theory in a general equilibrium setting. Thus, he endowed it with the multi-market considerations Jevons had largely avoided and the mathematical precisions Menger had ensued. Leon Valras is widely and rightfully regarded as the father of general equilibrium theory. A school of thought I know nothing about. It's always kind of disappointing, like, despite having studied politics at university and like, loads of these things, I'm like, never heard of it. It's the kind of thing I would have expected to have heard of, but no. Oh. Uh, massive loss to the Conservatives. And you are discrediting us again. Big increase to the Liberals. Nice. Karl Knies. Knies's linear... Linear Stage's argument spoke of moral progress which would render most theories obsolete. His 1873 work, however, contained little of the historical method in it. His political involvement earned him a temporary exile in 1843. He wrote Political Economy from the standpoint of the historical method in 1853 and Money and Credit in 1873. And we've very nearly got the battle. Oh, you should be almost finished. You are. Excellent. And that's going to give us... Rather more supply throughput, which will allow me to maintain my ships much better than we currently do. And there it is, complete. Next level for you costs 62,000, make it happen. And now we can get the level 5s as well, which is immediately just going to destroy my income. Alright, so we are still waiting for those. We could get ad hoc money bill printing, which gives us more tax income. More prestige gain, education efficiency... Reinforcements, regular or regiment experience with no inventions. That allows radio factories and radios. Hmm. I think we're going to get the uh, social sciences. Start on you. Okay, so clearly we need to increase our taxes rather more so that we can start actually building the navy that we need to have. 
to beat the British. And the sooner we get it going, the better. And the Americans. In fact, screw it. Let's go for the Americans. Let's just go for everyone. World War One in 1897. All right. Uh, no, can't quite afford you yet. Okay, several of the forts are being finished. Sidney Webb. Webb developed socialist ideas while at university in 1885. He joined the Fabian Society. The society believed that the capitalism had created an unjust and inefficient society. The members agreed that the ultimate aim of the group should be to reconstruct society in accordance with the highest moral possibilities. The Fabian Society was a fact-finding and fact-dispensing body, and it produced a series of pamphlets and a wide variety of different social issues. Many of these were written by Sidney Webb, including Facts for Socialists, Facts for Londoners, and The Eight-Hour Day. Webb also wrote a plan on the campaign for Labour with George Bernard Shaw. Webb later became an important social democrat figure with an influence in the international worker organisations. Now actually this reminds me, even though we got a Liberal Party into power, which is fantastic, it's actually the wrong one. This is the uh, Freisinger, Freisinger, Freisinger Party, which is basically the Freedom Party, which is pro-military. Well, we actually want jingoism, so we want the National Liberals in power. The only difference is pro-military versus jingoism, so this this shouldn't piss people off too much. I mean, it's basically what they voted for, but just not quite. Yeah, it's close enough, surely. <laughs> okay, another production going. Are we immediately starting? Uh, yes, we are, pretty much. We produce a lot of materials, so... And we are number one in prestige, so that means that we just buy everything we need. Boom. Like that. Everyone else would have to wait. They'd have to wait until we've got our fill of everything, and then level two gets there, and level three gets theirs, etc, etc, etc. It's nice. It's good to be the king. Still no more Brits. How on earth did that one tiny group get through and no one else? Johann Heinrich von Thunen. Johann Heinrich von Thunen was a North German landowner from the Mecklenburg area. Although educated at Göttingen, he spent most of his life managing his rural estate, Tello. In the first volume of his treatise, The Isolated State, in 1826, he laid down the first serious treatment of spatial economics connecting with the theory of rent. His second volume, in 1850, developed the essence of the marginal productivity theory of distribution in a mathematical precise way, thereby presiding thereby making one of the most important proto-marginalists of the era. Nearing his death, he asked that his famous equation for the marginal product of labour, or the national wage, be carved into his tombstone. And we provide everyone with a nice wage, so it's fine. Ooh, that's not good Poland. Let's go and help the Pole. Oh, can we get access? I mean, I'm quite happy to help you with those guys. All right, let's improve our relations with Poland and then help you out with this. Who are they? Polish-Lithuanian pan-nationalists. All right, 14-hour workday. This is going to reduce our factory output, but it does... Oh, no, it reduces the luxury needs for the poor and the middle classes. Ah, see, it's, it just doesn't give us anything that we want. Immigrant attraction? Pff, who cares? Keeping people happy? Pff, who cares? Nope, I'm not doing it. And there is almost no unemployment, except Posen. 64,000 people in Posen, so I think a factory literally just shut as I was opening that. We have been banned in France again. Alright, we need to keep an eye on you because I need to just keep on beefing up the relations. And also, Britain. Add war goal. Yes, finally. Um, I would like <clears throat> to cut you down to size. Prohibited from raising armies and lose 50% of their forces for five years. Must pay 25% of their income tax. Right, the invasion of Britain, it is coming. You are not going to be able to stop me. Hey, the Poles are actually fighting back. Marvellous. Well done. I would very much like to go after Austria. Are you a great power yet? I kind of doubt it. Nope. Um, shall we just start justifying against you? You are allied with France and the Netherlands, which would draw me into a war against those guys. Which isn't the end of the world, except I would then have to fight their navies at the same time. Um, nah. My goal right now is just to curb stomp Britain. I'm going to put an end to them as an effective military force. Uh, I'm just double checking for places with ports so I can make sure we keep upgrading them, because I have been... Someone lacks. And you. I think we can afford one. Whoops, one more. Dunzig. Not quite. No, we can. 
and then it's just Konigsberg, I believe, which will need another 120,000. At which point we can then reduce the taxes. Oh no, yeah, yeah, we can then reduce taxes again. Once we have that amount. So it is in your interest to get that money. You have basically dealt with all of them except for that one unit. German communists have r risen in Nienburg. Uh, hi. No, we're going to go... Screw it. We're going to use this unit and just do that. Although you're a defensive bonus guy. You're an attack. You can go there. You can stay here. Oil well found in Lvov. A dried up old traveller has returned from the wilderness. When given a whiskey, he says with a hoarse voice, Oil! I found oil! An ocean of oil! Lvov produces oil. We are, of course, in that era. We do produce automobiles. In fact, that's what I was going to do, is I was going to take a look at the uh, production. A group of German citizens who have left Germany some time ago on an expedition to Madagascar have been viciously refused entry to the country. It appears that the Madagascarian government has turned gradually to a policy of increasing isolationism, most likely in order to avoid the pains of modernising their political, economical and social institutions. This policy of the Madagascarian government is, obviously, impairing the advances impairing the advances of German trade, diplomacy and missionary activities in the region and must be considered an unjust restriction of the international freedom of movement. So we gain a CB on them. Or everyone becomes more jingoistic and militaristic. Now I'll take the CB. Alright, Poland. How you doing, buddy? Let's increase those relations, shall we? Do wish that was just an overtime thing like in EU4. Königsberg, how about another level of naval yard, eh? Hey, hey, old buddy, old thing, old chap. Okay, we can reduce taxes once again to 35% for everyone. In fact, we can go further than that. I think we can go down to 30. Uh, no, we won't. We're going We're gonna to keep taxes moderate because I do give you a lot of free stuff. But I'm going to reduce the tariffs to reduce the cost of business. Because business in Germany is king. Right, good. Alright, so we are up to 481. We should be getting some of the higher level stuff. Did we really only get, like, that many points? I was kind of expecting more, to be honest. Uh, Stettin. Yeah, they really are just starting. Damn it. Ah, education efficiency plus 10%, and industrial distribution investments. At this point, businesses start to make long-range production more efficient by... We've already read that. Okay, it is still 87, so we could get psychoanalysis. I don't think we really need to. We could get the ad hoc money printing. Honestly, that is sounding like the best option right now, so let's get you. Okay, good. Krakow accepted an offer for peace from Poland. Poland has retaken Krakow. Well done. Well done, indeed. Alright, let's keep on trying to make them happy with us. There we are. And then... Doo -doo 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 -doo, let's have a look at Egypt and see if we're unbanned yet. And if anyone else is causing problems. Uh, not really. Everyone seems to be kind of accepting that we are reigning supreme. Oh, we are losing money again. It is not a huge amount of money, though, and we should be recouping it soon enough. How's the unemployment? It is down to 31,000, still in Posen. So hopefully we're building more stuff in Posen. Ad hoc money bill printing, that was super fast. Blimey. Let's get private bank as well. Now, I believe... Uh, this is just increasing my administra and administration, so I don't need to pay for more bureaucrats and stuff. This percentage is based on the following. Oh, we see. Oh no, we have the good wage. So we should be needing more bureaucrats. But we're not, really. How is the clergyman? They're at 9, 1.97, so we're almost at the... Uh, the perfect 2%. Upper house virtually doesn't change. Industrial production investments. Again, another factory cost reduction. Excellent. The girl from Elsing. Oh, unfortunate. Alright, are we repairing any of these sodding ships? 
Yes, we are. Alright, so what are we short by? 140. Unfortunately, the steamships only cost 36. So we could get rid of a battleship, which would reduce it to 550. In fact, if we got rid of three battleships, we would be fine. But I'd rather just wait a bit longer and get more naval yards, because we're, we're churning them out. It's just that we kind of started doing this a little bit late. Offensive attitude. This meant finding and destroying enemy high sea navy at any cost. Even more navy attack. Marvellous. Yeah, we are losing a lot of money. Um, let's increase our tariffs to about 12%. Perfect. That will do nicely. Anyway, I think that that is going to be about it for this episode. Wow. We're getting a lot just because our people are so conscious. Very self-aware. But it results in a lot of infamy. So yeah, infamy is just run away. There's absolutely nothing we can do about it. So we're going to be under constant attacks from everyone. But that's okay, because we are super, super far ahead of everyone. Which is awesome. In fact, we're almost twice as strong as the UK, which is kind of hilarious. Cool. Well, that's going to be it for this episode, so thank you very much for watching. If you are enjoying this series, then please do hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, then do consider subscribing. If you have any tips or advice for me, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.